welcome to a spots and setups guide for breachers as a defender. You can go to any timestamp if you need help with a specific area. In this guide I'll show you ways to play as a defender both passively and aggressively, and how to utilize and play off of your gadgets as well. Starting off with the first floor, you can instantly notice the enemies don't have many options to push from. They can push from either the garage area, the orange area, the front lobby, or they can go down from a different floor. This means that getting information on even one of those entries will significantly help us pinpoint where the enemies are coming from. But of course, pushing outside of the front lobby like this is very dangerous as we risk running into multiple people, which is where our first spot comes in. By pushing out of the third floor balcony, one can look over an entry point from an unexpected spot. If you want, you can just pick this for a second to get information. However, if you're confident, you can always go for a killer turn. If playing that aggressive is not to your liking, you can always try to play on the sides, with this next spot on B side. By vaulting over the box at the corner of B side, you can get a really nice off angle into the entrance of the site, which you can also easily retreat from. If your sole goal is to protect the sides, then there are two other entrances you need to watch out for, as well as four breachable walls. For the warehouse entrance, I'd recommend using a tripwire or two in this spot. You don't need to invest too much money here, because the space is already close to where you're holding. For the entry to A site, I'd recommend either buying a door blocker or placing a proximity sensor somewhere in electric. For the breachable walls, a good tactic is to simply stay where you are and watch A site from an off angle, as enemies will not expect you to be able to see them from here. You can also buy a frag grenade or an incendiary to slow down the enemy immediately after the breach. Now. He didn't push, him. but he's in the door. Right. I didn't Can get someone him. help me on B side? I got him. Our next spot, which is a bit more situational, is standing on top of the table in connector. This is a much less known angle, and if you ever need to fight someone in connector, you can almost always catch them off guard. Some other notable angles are this one on the table of A side. This one outside connector and standing on top of this box on B entrance. For the second floor, we'll start with this angle in bathroom. You can stand on top of the sink to make your head move up instantly and throw off your enemy's aim. When playing here, your weaknesses are orange tears, warehouse and any path that leads to B site. The hatches that lead to this floor are also not a problem because they all overlap with our weak points already. For the orange stairs, I'd recommend using a door blocker, because it doesn't only block the enemies from entering into the site, but it also blocks vision into a site from orange stairs, letting you rotate freely. Now that we took care of orange stairs, let's move on to the warehouse and this path. For that, a simple proximity sensor anywhere in commander will work. You can also put the proximity here in the warehouse, which will catch them earlier. However, that is a bit more risky, as if they break this hatch, then you wouldn't know when they drop if you're playing far away. For these two paths, you can place down one or two trip wires like so, to make them practically invisible. Also, placing a proximity sensor here, in case they avoid the trip wires, as well as for people entering through this window. Moving on to our next spot, you can stand on top of this table to see players entering B-side from table room, or from the B-window, like so. Here, our weaknesses are anywhere that leads to A-side and Commander. For the same reasons as before, Again, we'll put a door blocker on orange stairs. For the bathroom area, you have multiple options. Between them, a static field limiter to force the enemies to fight while slowed, a proximity sensor to alert you if you need to rotate, or, my favorite, a double tripwire setup, which will both alert you if they enter, as well as deal damage to them. Now, as for commander, I'd recommend placing a door blocker, because then, if you know that the enemies are in the room, you can push through the door blocker to catch them off guard and get a peek as well as switching to a different position safely if you wish to do so. Some other notable mentions are standing behind the bomb on A site, playing on the third floor, and playing here in warehouse. Moving on to the third floor, I'll note that there are a lot of questionable peaks and pixel walks you can do here, so I will not be covering any of those, and with that out of the way, Let's start with our first spot being right here in Locus. 
When playing here, we need to pay attention to the blue and orange areas, as well as the generator. For the generator, I've found two troopers placed like so to be the most effective, as people that go there will usually either not notice them and die, or notice them and get scared. For the blue area, one proximity sensor on the plant box here is enough to know if someone is coming behind you. For the orange area, let's place another proximity right here in lockers. I've just been telling you what to place and where to play without too much explanation, because what's important here is not so much what gadgets you use, but more how you play this position. As soon as you hear a proximity go off, try to immediately pick the proximity to catch an enemy while he's trying to destroy it. And the same thing goes for the other proximity as well. If you hear your teammates fighting on A-site, now is the time to start scaling forwards and flank. However, it's important to be patient with this, as if you go too early, you will probably run into someone and risk yourself dying. Now onto our next spot, staying hidden on the second floor. When playing here, your main goal is to flank the enemies if they push the blue area. Again, for the same reasons as before, you'd want to be extremely patient and not go too early. Also, if you manage to get behind the enemies, try to get at least two people. If you see a single person and he's not looking at you, hold your fire and try to find another one. As for the gadgets, you want the enemies to go A-site, since then you can flank them. For that reason, you'd want to protect B-site as heavily as you can. First off, let's start with the door blocker and generator. I wouldn't recommend putting anything more than a door blocker here, since a lot of the time people will buy a grenade to destroy the door blocker, so any other gadgets will be blown up as well. Alternatively, you could place trip wires or proximity sensor as well. However, then you need to be careful when crossing between A and B to not get shot from generator. For the other entrance, pretty much anything works well, so I'd recommend a static field limiter or a tripwire, since those are the cheapest defensive gadgets. Also, if you know that they're coming from orange stairs, then you can always try to take the long route and flank them from the second floor. Some notable mentions for this floor are this spot on B-side, this spot in lockers, and this spot on A-side. Lastly, the warehouse. First, let me explain when you should play here. Since playing in the warehouse leaves every other entry far away from you, it will take a long time to rotate anywhere else. That's why I'd recommend only playing here if you know your enemies like to push it. Also, if none of your teammates play there, then you should be the one to fill this role. Starting off with our first spot, by standing on top of this box and walking along the rail, you can stand behind these blue boxes. When you play here, it's important to note that you are committing to protecting the warehouse. You don't have any safe retreat options and it's hard for your teammates to help you. However, thanks to how unexpected this position is, you can guarantee at least 2 kills if you play it right. For the next one, playing in B entrance and standing atop these boxes to get a view into manager's office. This spot is a lot safer than the last one, as you can easily retreat back into B site. But you still have the potential to get a peek right at the start. However, what you need to keep in mind when playing here, is that if the enemies take control of B entrance, they could stand on top of this box and deny your retreat. This is a very common angle as well, so I'd highly recommend using gadgets to either deny it or inform you that they're here. Some other bit more situational angles that I still found very useful in the warehouse are standing on top of this box to look into the bathroom hallway. You can also stand on top of this box to achieve the same result. And lastly, standing here outside of managers can also prove effective. Our last area is the front lobby. Before we start here, I'll immediately say that while playing in the front lobby, knowing how to play and familiarizing yourself on stairs will help you immensely. A good way to train is to force yourself to repeatedly play on orange and blue stairs with a variety of guns. Now that that's out of the way, let's get to our first spot, which is right here on the stairs. The key to this spot is how you play it. If you hear the window close to you get broken, then you can take your opponent by surprise. And the same goes for the other two doorways. Then, if someone breaks the window on the second floor, you can simply hold the window from here. But if you're looking for something a bit safer, you can never go wrong with simply staying in table room and listening to know if they break a door or a window. One front lobby. Now, when you play here, you want to be careful of B window, since an enemy entering quickly can kill you instantly as well as someone coming from Blue Stairs or Warehouse and coming to Museum. For the B window, I'd recommend putting a door blocker. Not only because it blocks your enemy's vision to you and lets you hear if they enter, 
but it also gives you an option to push through the door blocker and catch them by surprise. As for someone picking us from museum, well, it takes time to get there. As long as we fall back towards sight, if we don't hear anything in the first 10 seconds, an enemy wouldn't be able to sneak up to us and catch us off guard. Thank you very much for spending the time to watch this guide, and I hope you learned something from it. And with that, farewell.